written production of the recreation centers of Sun City Incorporated and is intended for the sole purpose of informing our recreation center members. Any duplication, copying, transmission, broadcast or use including electronic and social media is strictly prohibited without the prior written consent from the recreation centers of Sun City Incorporated. Thank you for watching. Okay, moving on to our planning session. Okay, got it. Okay, thank you. Secretary Lair. Well, thank you for um, allowing me this opportunity, Management Board of Directors, to talk about um, capacity analysis, capacity utilization, and trending. And if you wouldn't mind keeping the slides up because I'm using those to move forward, thank you. Um, this has a, a, been a year-long project by the Long Range Planning Committee, and they have put a tremendous amount of time and effort into, into this. I'm not sure how many long-range planning people, there were several here earlier. Um, Gary, if you would just stand, Gary's been a, a key part of this. Oh, Steve, anybody else in long-range planning? Oh, now I see. Okay. These people did a tremendous amount of work. And Kat. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little nervous. Um, but the Long Range Planning Committee put in, you know, over a year's worth of work into this, and um, we got it almost 90% done and found out we had a little bit of a uh, mathematical problem, something wrong with our equation, so we had to go back and re recalculate everything. But um, hopefully it's a first run, um, and I hope you find it very important and very interesting. And uh, I want to just give you a little background on why this started. The rationale behind this was that we had done a long uh, utilization and long-term trend report, probably, Gary did it probably in 2018, and it was very valuable. Uh, and, and then the following year, we, we also did a summary of PIF, an evaluation of the process, and kind of a scoring tool for it. When we were done and we talked as a group, we found out that we were missing something. It was a good tool, it was a good first start, but it didn't capture what we were looking for. We needed more information. So as a result, the committee uh, made a decision to take a look at capacity, capacity utilization and trending. Next slide, please. So basically, um, what we wanted to do was develop a, a tool and, and a systematic type of an approach to looking at capacity. And it, originally, our thought was, when we first started, that this was something that the Long Range Planning Committee really needed for us to make solid recommendations to the Board of Directors and uh, management. And uh, in the process, we found that it was so much more than that. Um, it gave us the uh, opportunity to objectively look at criteria, uh, and it's uniformly done, but also it gave us the opportunity to do some uh, demand forecasting, which, as you can tell over the last year, has been really critical um, because, you know, one group thinks they need more space and one group thinks they, you know, don't need space or this one. You know, this is an objective way to kind of look at that. And also for us to plan for the future on where we need to uh, devote our resources. Um, it's also needed for executive planning and budgeting, which we've talked a lot about. Um, but most importantly, it really is a good operational tool. It, it, it allows us to maximize our space, um, which will help us to save PIF dollars or allot those PIF dollars where they're most needed. And if we do things right, increase operational efficiency and uh, save dollars for the members. Next slide, please. So what I was looking at was 
um, or the board or the committee was looking at was really the three things. We wanted to determine capacity, which really is nothing more than looking at how much a certain sport or activity needs um, during the course of their activity. And then we wanted to also go back and take a look at how much it's actually being used. How much space do they have and how much is it being utilized? And then we wanted to also look at the trend. I mentioned before that we did a, a trend analysis. It was a long-term trend analysis and utilization. But to be consistent, we decided to look at the trend for the test period. Next slide, please. Okay, when the committee got together, um, this was, we, we first started talking about this after the shutdown from COVID. And so they were very concerned about the negative effects on utilization because of COVID. Uh, they also were concerned about, and even after COVID, once we reopened, our utilization was down for quite a while. People were hesitant to come you know, to activities and participate in different things. So we wanted to make sure we didn't, you know, uh, skew things because of that. The other factor that the committee felt strongly about is that this organization has um, unique out-migration over the summer. There's many residents who leave for several weeks to months over the summertime. Some people have homes in, outside of Sun City, um, either out of state or within Arizona itself. But our volume of people, and if you live here all year long like I do, it's really easy. The traffic, there's no traffic. Parking is never an issue. The grocery store is great. Um, but for this analysis, we wanted to make sure we minimize that. And then it was also very important for the committee that whatever we did, we were going to be consistent across the board and everyone would be evaluated equally. So ad to address all those things, we determined that the test period for this analysis would be 2015 through 2019. We eliminated the months of May, June, July, and August to minimize the effects of out-migration. And from a consistency standpoint, not just evaluating every, everybody, but we looked at the hours that the center, um, center hours, they're not all the same. Lakeview's hours are, are less than Bell's hours. And so whatever the hours for the week were, we divided it by seven, and then that's our daily hours. And it doesn't always work exactly like that, but it's a rounding error, and we felt that that was, was good. Next slide, please. Okay, so once that was decided, we had to decide on, you know, what tools or metrics we were going to use for this evaluation. And um, we have a long history of very good reports from management on activities, the activities reports, very consistent, and there, we have long record of having those reports. Um, but not all the areas we decided to evaluate were captured in the activity reports. So in those cases, we had to look at um, club activity and their utilization reports. And in some instances, and I will use billiards at Lakeview, for example, um, they came in and the club has a very good way of, um, all the members come in and they sign, have a sign-up sheet and everybody signs in. But if someone comes in from the outside and isn't a member of the club, they go to the facility attendant and they sign in there. So. We kind of were at loss. We looked at the facility attendant reports and found out it just, it was off, you know. So in talking to the club members, we found out that we missed this whole section of data with their sign-in sheets. So we had to combine. Okay, the next thing was defining and identifying the uh, metrics for the actual capacity. And this is probably where the rubber hits the road. Um, I'd like you to take a look, if you wouldn't mind, people who have the tabs, if maybe you go to tab eight, and we'll look at, at pickleball. You can see um, at the bottom to the left, there, it starts with daily hours. So we looked at the daily hours, you know, for Marinette, and that's 15 per day. We looked at the number of courts at Marinette, there's 20. Are you on the right page? Yeah. Okay, first, sorry. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Uh, we looked at the total, um, I have it rink hours, but it's total court hours per day, which was 300, so it's just simple math there. 
And then we had to get input from pickleball players and um, the pickleball club on what is the average amount of time when someone comes to play pickleball, what's the average amount of time that they spend um, with that activity when they come? And um, I was told that you know some people come for an hour and a half and some people are there for five hours. So they thought that the average was three hours and that's what we used for our analysis. Then we determined the net game hours per day. Um, we also looked at the maximum number of players per court. So if you don't know anything about pickleball, pickleball, like, much like tennis, can be played as singles or they can be played as doubles. So the maximum number of players per court were four. And then just calculating down the number of uh, players per day till we come up with the actual total. So the capacity at the, at the end, you can see the total players per month is 12,000. That's what our capacity is. And then we just multiplied that number by eight, the number of months in the test period. Okay. Uh, when it came to the trend analysis, um, we decided to be consistent. We wanted to look at the trend over the test period. So we're going to do a five month rolling or a five year rolling average of what the, the trend was up or down. All right, uh, the next slide is just really kind of, you know, if you're interested, uh, what we did and um, how we calculated uh, the numbers. And total utilization was actually whatever the, the, the numbers, the number of visits, lines of bowling, whatever it was, um, and then we calculated that for the eight months. When you were looking at pickleball, you saw that there were two months where there was no data at all. And what we did in a case like that is we took the average for what was there, and then we multiplied that average by eight. So we didn't penalize them. If there was work being done, uh, courts being resurfaced, or whatever was happening, we wanted to make sure that that didn't penalize them. Uh, utilization as a percent of capacity. Oops, keep going back the other way. There you go, okay. <laughs> So basically, once you know what the capacity is, you're just looking at the, the amount of utilization for that capacity, and we put it in the, in the form of a percent. And trend analysis was, um, we used a basic uh, percent change formula. Okay, next slide. These are only a few of the areas that we looked at. We looked at probably twice as many areas as, as this, but we decided for the sake of keeping things concise. We were only gonna look at these few areas. And at the last minute, we decided to pull out fitness because it's, it's, it's a little more complicated. You know, it's, we can't just do it by game. Some pieces of equipment take a little bit more time, some, you know. So we're gonna pull that out, the long range planning decided we're gonna pull that out and do that as a standalone project in 2022. So that's not in this report. Okay, next slide. Now you have, starting with tab one and going all the way through, they should be in order. You have, the board has the detail uh, analysis for each of the entities. But from a summary standpoint, uh, Billiards had a five year uh, trend of a positive 65%. That's pretty significant. And I also looked at the work that Gary had done earlier and from 2017 to 2019, it had a downward trend, so of 19%. But there's been a resurgence in um, billiards, so it's important that we, we make a note of the discrepancy there. But overall, when you look at the utilization as a percent of capacity, um, billiards is, has a lot of capacity. Uh, Bell has 18 uh, tables, Lakeview has 18 tables, and I believe Fairway has five. It should be on the sheet for Fairway. I also looked at all the utilization of all billiards and took the capacity combined for everything. And when you combine them all, uh, billiards only uses about 2% of capacity. So there's some things we could maybe do there. It's, you know, if fairway, since it only has five tables, if that space were needed for something else, um, both Bell or Lakeview could easily accommodate those numbers. Uh, I think you gotta keep track of the 65% positive trend line though. It's something that you have to keep a watch on before you make any decisions. Next slide. 
Uh, the next thing we looked at was bowling. And bowling doesn't look at number of people that come in, but they look at lines bowled. So that changes things a little bit. Uh, bowling dropped over the five year test period 4.5%. But the utilization as a percent of capacity was actually very solid. Um, Bell was at 58%, Lakeview was at 44 The long-term trend, and I think we can all agree, that bowling is not as popular as it was 25 or 30 years ago. So the long-term trend shows its decline by 45%. But with the numbers the way they are now, you know, there's, there's no opportunity for combining anything. Actually, if something's running at 58%, even in the 40s, I would not touch it. I think it's pretty good. Next slide. Okay, we also decided to take a look at spas. We looked at everything. But I wanted to keep this in here because we know that the spas, especially indoor spas, are notoriously expensive as far as maintenance and um, upkeep. And we wanted to see like how, how, how often are spas being used. If you look at the slide, the overall um, utilization over the test period was down 6%. And um, it's interesting, again, when you look at the long-term trend, that it actually was up 14%. But those are smaller numbers. It's not like, you know, some of the others. But the overall utilization as a percent of capacity is pretty low. We have a lot of capacity. Bell has an outdoor spa, which you, it gets used much more than the indoor spa. The indoor spa is very expensive to maintain. Fairways at 13%. Lakeview has two indoor spa areas, and they're very underutilized. Um, Mountain View, Marinette. Um, I wanted to say Mountain View's, the spa at Mountain View is, is not as nice. It need, maybe needs a little work. And it's indoors. Okay. So for what, for what it's worth, you know, I think more from an operation standpoint, it's like, you know, if you were gonna build something, um, maybe Mountain View, don't put an indoor spa in. <laughs> That's all I can say about that. Okay, moving on, golf. Now golf, this really surprised me because we've heard a lot of negative stuff about golf and I don't play golf and I don't bowl and there's a lot of stuff I don't do, but, I was surprised that the overall trend for the test period was 33%. Now this is before COVID. And we know that once we had the shutdown in COVID, for the last two years, golf has been really good because for a long time it was the only game in town. But even before that, they were a positive 33%. I also broke it down by uh, regulation golf courses and those numbers are rock solid. I mean, anything that's in the 40s and 50s is really good. So I was pleasantly surprised by that. And the trend over the test period for regulation golf was up 28%. Um, executive golf courses, this again was astounding to me. Uh, the trend upward for them was 71%. Now their utilization as a percent of capacity is only in the 30s, so it, you know, it needs a little work, but the trend is, is positive. Uh, the nine hole course at Quail um, is the lowest of the golf. It's only 26% of capacity, so its utilization is not as good. And the trend for that one was down 22%. And if you look over to the far side on the gold part of the slide, you can see the overall long-term trend that Gary had put together, and that was down 20, I can't see it that far, 22, I think. Okay, next slide. Next was tennis, and uh, despite the big investment in tennis that RCSE has made over the last 10 years in, in Bell Tennis, um, which is really state of the art, the utilization as a percent of capacity was only 4%. Um, Lakeview has only really two usable courts. A lot of people use that because of the backboards. Not a lot of gameplay that takes place there, but they do like the backboards there. And then um, Mountain View was um, 2%. Lakeview and Mountain View, I believe, both have only two um, courts. 
so it makes the numbers look up higher, where Bell has 10. Um, because of the negative trend line over just this five-year period of a negative 23 percent and the long-term trend of a negative 57 percent, um, I looked to see what, if Bell Center could handle the Lakeview and Mountain View tennis. And so this percent for the whole thing, tennis combined, is moving all the capacity to Bell, and it's at 6 percent based on the, that capacity. Okay, because this, this was a little bit, you know, maybe not good news, depending on who you are, um, the conclusion was that tennis had a negative trend line, both negative, uh, both short-term and long-term. Uh, the utilization is down below where it should be, and we have a lot of capacity for tennis. So with that, the longer-term, long-range planning committee made some uh, recommendations to compress or consolidate tennis, um, not that you'd have to do anything today, but when an opportunity arose to Im make improvements or remodeling, that this is an area that maybe could be compressed, and that would improve operational efficiency. Next slide. Next area we looked at was mini golf. And mini, mini golf has a positive trend for the test period of 29%. Its long-term trend is a positive 15 percent, and, you know, looks, I, I, I guess I'm surprised we have, you know, uh, mini golf clubs right now that play, um, and I think that's why you see an uptick in utilization at Bell and Lakeview. Um, Mountain View and Sundial, I put them up there, but I don't know how accurate those are. There really isn't a facility attendant. There's a monitor, I've, I've played mini golf there at Sundial, and you come, the sheet's there, and there's people playing, and nobody signed up. So, you know, it made the total score for mini golf only at 11%, but I did asterisk that, because I think the data is not accurate there at all. Okay, next slide is shuffleboard. Now, shuffleboard's not a big deal, but we were there at Bell, we were looking at Billiards, we were looking at bowling, we we're looking at spas. So we decided to look at shuffleboard, um, primarily because it's a prime piece of real estate. And we wanted to just see how they were doing, never really looked at it. Um, Bell is only operating at 1% capacity of their capacity. So that's, that's not very good. Um, and just in the three or five year test period, they dropped 3%. You can look at the trends for the long-term trends showed it was up 7%, um, but the, from 2011 to 2019, it was down 52. So I went and looked at all those years of activity, and basically it's declining, declining, and then you had a little blip where all of a sudden people were doing shuffleboard and then it just dropped. Okay. Um, pickleball. The overall trend, f and. This is, pickleball is probably the primary reason I decided to take a look at the trending over five years, because when you start from zero and then you grow, you get these astronomical numbers which, you know, aren't relatable with the other areas. So um, they had a very positive trend line of 68 percent over the test period, which was really good. I personally was very surprised that um, the utilization as a percent of capacity was as low as it was. Miranet is at 32 percent, Mountain View at 22 for a combined score of 30 percent. So again, you know, I think the members on the Long Range Planning Committee, we kind of sat back and took a look at that and said, you know, how can this be? So next slide, thank you. This is some of the things we thought might be contributing to the low number. Is a possible lack of captured data um, regarding utilization. And in speaking to, I, I talked to many people in, in pickleball, Karen McAdam was one of them, and she told me that a lot of times the sign-in sheets for the clubs were in the center of the pavilion, but if people come at the time, they just got ushered through the gate, mm -hmm. and if they were playing outside, they might not walk over. So there's a possibility we're not capturing all the data. Um, as a result of discussing this, you know, we decided to make a motion on the board here to change that so that we could have better numbers moving forward. 
Another thought we had was that there's a lot of crowding on the pickleball courts during what people like to say are, you know, prime hours, usually when it's cooler. And, you know, we thought by eliminating the summer months, we would not have such an impact with that, but, you know, it was still there. And um, so that's, that's an option, although we have the same issues with golf and somehow they've managed to work through the, the temperature changes. Uh, and then the last thing was maybe that the club hours were limited. And pickleball has been very generous with their club hour time. If they have pickleball hours and somebody from the public wants to come in and play pickleball, um, they will allow anybody to come in. But if the members don't have space, then they have to step aside. But if there's empty space and room for, that's available, they, they do not tell people they can't come. So the conclusions here is that um, it's got a very positive trend. It's, you know, it's very future focused, which anecdotally we did a lot of research on that and found that, you know, it's something that's trending very positively for future generations. But the results were unclear and I think we've made steps to improve that. Other recommendations from the Long Range Planning Committee would be to possibly edit the script that the facility monitor has. And I, I don't know what the script is, but we're thinking if someone comes in to go swimming, and that's not just for pickle about anywhere. Somebody comes in to swim at um, Sundial, for, for instance, and they're gonna do laps or whatever. I mean, we should ask them, are you gonna use anything else? Are you gonna use the spas? So we, we make sure that we're capturing that data or people come in for pickleball, maybe they're gonna play, work out on fitness, they say I'm here for fitness, and then they go on and do pickleball and they never got counted. So just a, just a thought, a suggestion. Uh, another thing that the committee thought was that we could possibly do a cost benefit analysis by management, including the cost of utilities to um, enclose the pavilion um, versus just adding additional co courts. Now, that, this was done before the summer and before we got together with the Mountain View and all of that, so I'm not sure that that's appropriate anymore, but it was a recommendation put forward by the committee, so I wanted to include that. Another thing we talked about on the committee was um, making Marinette a center of excellence for um, pickleball. And again, I'm not sure if that's appropriate at this time because, um, you know, if we're looking to spend lots of dollars on Mountain View, you know, it doesn't, it, it doesn't lend itself to that. Next slide, please. The last slide, not the least, um, lawn, lawn bowling, and I'm telling you, when I do this, I practice this, I'm always saying lawn bowling for pickleball and pickleball for lawn bowling, so cross your fingers, I get this right. <laughs> but anyways, um, this was probably, hands down, the most difficult area that we evaluated. There just was an extreme lack of data. The club doesn't have a lot of data. There's nothing in the activities reports. Even our membership numbers that we got were skewed. So everything we looked at was difficult. But what we did do is we got help from the club's office and what we wanted to do is to find out how many actual people play lawn bowling. Uh, what's, what skewed the numbers were that if you joined a, a, a lawn bowling club, for $5 more, you could be a member of all five clubs. So, you know, when you're looking at membership, that kind of threw a red herring in there. So we did work that out with, with the club's office to get the membership back down, and we trended that over five years. And based on their membership, lawn bowling has declined 20% um, over the five-year test period. And then we looked at the actual utilization as a percent of capacity, and you know, it's it's a little concerning. Um, Bell did well, and I, I, I must, must tell you that lawn bowling does a lot of good things, like pickleball, they have tournaments, you know, which is a great marketing tool for Sun City, and it, it, there's a lot of good things about it. But um, Bell and Lakeview both have double centers. And that means they have a clubhouse and they have eight rinks on one side and eight rinks, it's like two bowling alleys right there. And we have two of those. So actually we have more like seven lawn bowling areas. But anyway, uh, with that being said, Bell is, 
very well utilized and it's got a lot of capacity. So there's 16 rinks there and they're at 1.4%, which is not good, but better than Fairway, which only has eight and is operating at 0.5 of 1%. Um, I have a concern about that, but I'll get to that later. Lakeview, again, has a lot, uh, a lot of capacity. They have 16 rinks there. 16, 18, I don't know. Um, and they're 1.5. Mountain View and Oakmont are both eights. So their capacity is down. Combined capacity, if I looked at all the utilization for lawn bowling over all the centers combined, it's 1.3% plus the negative trend line. So major concerns for lawn bowling. Next slide, please. Um, as I mentioned before, extreme lack of data. Uh, club data was, when I got the data, which was intermittent at best, there were some years where some centers had nothing and some centers had some numbers. And what I got was not on a monthly basis, it was for the whole year. So I had to actually recalculate to get it to be, con compare apples to apples. I didn't want to give them 12 months of data and somebody else only eight months of data. I talked about the misleading uh, membership numbers, and I don't know how else to say it. We are in, we have excess capacity for lawn bowling. Lawn bowling is, is an expensive amenity. I think there's a place for lawn bowling here at Sun City. They bring in outsiders. We have tournaments, international tournaments, but we are way overbuilt in lawn bowling. Next slide, please. So the conclusion is Obviously, overcapacity, underutilized, negative trend line, and like tennis, we really need to take a look at compressing or consolidating over time. You know, ideally when there's uh, remodeling, construction, something's changing. I wouldn't close anything just for the sake of closing it, but I think there's opportunities to make us much more operationally efficient. Next slide. So, in conclusion, what the Long Range Planning Committee would like is to make a recommendation that this type of analysis is done on a yearly basis by management and reported back to the, to the board along with the Long Range Planning Committee and that the board set actionable parameters on where things, you know, you hit a certain percentage, this should strike a, a mark to increase or decrease or whatever. The, the Long Range Planning Committee felt that of a lot of the things we've done, this is probably the, the best piece of work we've produced in a long time because it looked at a lot of different variables. They put a lot of time in it, into it. And as I mentioned earlier, not only does it, you know, allow the board to make educated decisions on, you know, where we need to put our, our PIF dollars, um, but also operationally, where we can save money to keep our annual assessments low. So with that, uh, last slide, any questions, comments? Madam President. Yes. Um, somebody may want to call 911. Uh, Dale's going to have a heart attack here in a minute. I want to congratulate you, Dale. Oh, yeah. That's <laughs> Uh, I'll tell you what, I have, uh, I have been an outspoken opponent of the Long Range Planning Committee for a number of years, and I was one of four people that pushed very hard to get them reinstated as a standing committee. And between the, the capacity and utilization report that you did earlier on clubs and this one, I think you guys have hit a home run. Um, the numbers are probably not 100% accurate, and I think you would agree with that, mm -hmm. especially lawn bowling, I, and, and mm -hmm. I think pickleball numbers are probably low as well, mm -hmm. but um, I, that's all right, because the process is in place, and starting in November, we've started getting the numbers on a monthly basis from everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's, that's going to be of a benefit, and as we work our way through 2022, those numbers are going to matriculate in, and you're going to start being able to see real numbers that make this happen. Uh, I, I congratulate you. I congratulate the Long Range Planning Committee. I think this is exactly where we need to be, and it's going to help future boards make Absolutely. very tough and difficult decisions going forward that aren't just subjective, but are also very objective and data driven. Congratulations, Dale. Thank you. <laughs> and I would like to comment.
comment, Dale, you and I have been data dealing data with data-driven information since we got on this board. Mm -hmm. I agree with you 100% that we have to look at that data before we make decisions on things like this. This is very, very well done. And I really do want this used and kept going because I do think this provides us with critical information to make those decisions that are coming in the future. So job well done. Well, thank you. And with that, I will make a motion or somebody from the Long Range Planning Committee will be making a motion. <laughs> Two of them are gonna be on the board. In January. In January. Yes, yes, good job. Okay, with that conclusion, I think we are done with our planning. I wish everyone a Merry Christmas. We are done. And Valentine's Day. Written production of the Recreation Centers of Sun City Incorporated and is intended for the sole purpose of informing our Recreation Center members. Any duplication, copying, transmission, broadcast, or use, including electronic and social media, is strictly prohibited without the prior written consent from the Recreation Centers of Sun City Incorporated. Thank you for watching.